to write the words down of that song for me. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I bow my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yeah. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing yeah. of the goodness of God. Amen. And this verse right here, it's in the, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You are close like no other. Amen. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And all and I have lived in the goodness of God. Yes. As, as she was singing that last night and this morning, that one that one part. I love your voice. Yes. That's just been going through my mind yes. just about. Yes. And I got to thinking about over the past 22 years of my life of being yes. saved. The times that I've heard the voice of God, I thought about, and I just got to just kind of just uh, remembering some things in my life. And I guess one of the first things that I remember after a young Christian, and as a young Christian when I first got saved, and I was back in the mountains back there in my mind, it was in turmoil. And I thought about, well, some believe this way, some believe that way. I don't know how to believe. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's right and what's wrong and, and everything like that. And I remember I was back there. I was a deer hunting, and this was one of the, the one of the first real times that I got to hear the voice of God after being saved. And I was back there a deer hunting, and, and uh, well, I, I watched the sun come up, and I was a hunting. And I got down out of my stand, and I got to walking around, and, and my mind just going different ways. Should I believe this way? Is this right, Lord? Is that right, Lord? I don't know what's right. And, and to be honest, I got to the point of just about giving up because they, uh, the whole thing was just turmoil. And, and I was going around through there, and I, I thought I was thirsty, and I got down to get me some water. And, and I was a drinking water, just a cup in my hands and a drink in it. And I thought about the Lord. He said, just look back. And I thought about I looked back in that. And all I could see was my face. And, yeah. and I heard the voice of God. And he said, that's the one that you have to worry about. Yeah. I think, and uh, he began to tell me, he said, it don't matter what others believe. You believe what I show you. Yeah. And I got to thinking about that in my I thought about that the first time, the voice of God. And I thought about not long after that. And I thought about, I told it before, but I thought about the heart, the issues that I have with my heart and, yeah. uh, and all of this stuff. I thought about blacking out at work yeah. and these, these things. And I thought about the, getting to hear the voice of God that, and that he's right there with me. Yeah. I thought, and the, if you read the word of God and he told us, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He said, but I'll go with you all the way, even unto the end. And, uh, but I, I got to thinking about not long. Well, me and, my, me and Catherine, we got married. And, I thought about we got married. And I thought about the, the struggles of, of, of marriage. When me and her got married, I thought about it just it blindsided both of us. And I thought about uh, there for a while, me and her, to be honest with you, I, I thought she hated me, and I thought I hated her. And, I thought about I heard my building, and I thought about hearing the voice of God. And he never said a word. He never said a word to me. But I thought about I was praying and agonizing with God and telling God, "Well, Lord, we can't do this." And I thought about me and her marriage is, is going to pot, and I thought about all of these things was happening in her life. And I thought about, but the door of my building come open, and I thought about the voice of God. He never said a word, but. I thought about the arms. I felt his arms go around me. I felt the compassion of God come upon me. And I thought about all my life. All of my life. Listen to that. Of the words of that song. And all my life. You have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And I'll tell you what. I failed the Lord time and time again. I thought about if I got what I deserve. And I'm not talking about before I got saved. I'm not talking about when I was lost. 
But since I got saved, if I had gotten what I deserved, I would still be in hell with my back broken. I thought about if I had gotten what I deserved, I wouldn't get to hear the voice of God. I thought about the times that He's asked me to do things and I've not done them or, or didn't do them exactly when He wanted me to do them. And he could have said, well, I'm done with you and turn a deaf ear to me. I could never get to hear His voice again. But I tell you what, I appreciate Him this morning. Amen. I thought about how faithful he's been to me. I, I thought about in my life. I thought about he's never been late. He's always been right on time. I thought about the faithfulness of God. I wish I could describe it. I can't describe it. I thought about words can't tell just how faithful and how good that God's been to us. And each one of us, we each have our own testimonies. And, and yet when they come together, they're as one. They, and what it's saying, as I, if God answers a prayer for you, He's done the same thing for me before in my life. Amen. I appreciate Him this morning. I, I love Him with all my heart. And I would love I thought about, you know, when body, I'm tired this morning. I guess I'm about as tired as I've been in a while. As far as body, I'm sore and, and everything like that. But I thought, as coming to church this morning, I no doubt when Christ was his and walking up Calvary, I bet his bones and I bet his muscles were sore that morning. I guarantee it because he'd been big, big, big beyond, beyond recognition. I thought about it. They placed a crown of thorns on him to where it went into his eyebrows. And I thought about all of that, the agonized agony that he was in. But yet he still, he determined in his heart that he said, I'm going to do this for you. And I thought this morning, let's just show God. Let's show Jesus this morning. If Jesus has ever done something for you, show him this morning that you love him. And I thought about this morning, yeah. I thought my, even my fingers are sore, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad this morning that I've been born again. I'm glad that he's been faithful in my life. I'm glad, I thought about, hey, I've got a, a good godly family. I thought about a natural family. I thought about, and I love every one of them, but I'll tell you what, God's blessed me with a great big family. I thought about, I've got brothers and sisters that I can talk to. I thought about when you're going, when you're down and out, you can get on a phone and call somebody. They can help you. I thought about but even better than that. You've got a friend in Jesus. You've got somebody. Hey, that voice. He'll, he'll talk to you. He'll whisper. He'll whisper to you in a still small voice. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes he may come to you in a loud voice. And I thought about the times that he has. The loud voice, the correction of God when He's come to. I appreciate Him for that this morning. I thought about as a father may scold his child. I think what God scolded me before, and at the times I done just like a just like a little boy. I thought about well, God, you hate me. Oh, you hate me. I thought about but now as times as I've gotten older, the times that Mom and Daddy's put me. I look back and boy, they loved me. I thought about at the time I thought Mom and Daddy, you hate me. But I'll tell you what, this morning, the times that God's put me and showed me where I was going wrong, showed me where I might have been looking at somebody in a wrong spirit or something like that, and God telling me, I scolded me, you don't need to do that. The Bible said, love those that despitefully use you. Pray for those that hate you. And I'll tell you what, I appreciate God this morning. I appreciate Him training me and teaching me. Yeah, I don't know everything. I'm not perfect, but... I'm glad that he's still not done Amen. working on me this Amen. morning. Amen. Anybody have anything on their heart? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Appreciate that this morning. Anything at all this morning?
still was terrible. My stomach was still in my head was still, and I just felt terrible. Right. And uh, I was sitting there, and as we was leaving, the thought hit my head, I know the Lord can do it. So, you know, it's just, I know it's just something little, just a little sickness, but I asked Aaron if uh, they could anoint me, and they did. And uh, I was still sick for a little while after I left church for about three or four hours, but I kept just telling myself, the Lord healed me.
Amen. Amen. But yet God, amen, uh, showed His mercy and His kindness toward us. Amen. That we could uh, that we could have this opportunity to go with me to Acts chapter number four. Acts chapter number four. Do my best to give you that that the Lord has laid on our hearts. Probably won't be before you, but just for a minute. Amen. Just going to share this with you and uh, get out of the way. Amen. I'm glad to be in the Lord's house this morning. Glad you're in the Lord's house this morning. Appreciate the Lord sweeping by and helping us this morning. Amen. I'll read one, one verse of Scripture. Well, two verses of Scripture this morning. Verse, uh, verses number 13, verse number 14. The Bible said, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against him. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. Thank you for standing. We preached out this scripture a couple of weeks ago in a meeting. And uh, the Lord just keeps bringing it back to my mind. And uh, uh, we all know what's happening here. This is in the beginning uh, of chapter number 3. There's word that the lame man was laid at the gate. And, uh, and then, then here come Peter and John. He was a big dog. And here come Peter and John. Amen. And, 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 and they told him, they said, silver and gold have I none. Uh, but such as I have, give I thee. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, rise up and walk. But then they go on down here to this point, chapter number four, and these people had seen what Peter and John was able to do, and they uh, begin to they begin to look at him and begin to uh, realize, amen, something about, about these men. Uh, that was not uh, in everybody. Amen. The Bible said uh, that they, uh, they they realized that they had uh, been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to preach just for a minute on, on just one of the simple thought. Amen. That the Lord has given us. I want to preach on just taking knowledge that you've been with Jesus. Amen. Just taking knowledge that you've been with Jesus. Amen. There's some things uh, that I'd like to mention this morning is God. Help be my helper. I may not get it no big great way this morning. Amen. But I want to help us by the grace of God. Amen. But I thought in this, in this, in this life that we live, Amen. They still want to be some things uh, in mind in your walk with God that people can recognize uh, that we've been with Jesus. Amen. I thought in in, in, in the days time that we live, it's so easy, I guess, to say. I guess I ain't, me and Tom was talking about it the other day. If I go and I hang around Todd a lot, uh, there's some things that Brother Todd does uh, that I'm probably going to pick up on. And, and the more time we spend together, the more things that Todd does uh, that I'm going to be able to, I'm going to start picking it up. Amen. Amen. Hey, man, there's so many words that Todd says, uh, maybe actions that Todd does uh, that I'm going to be picking up on and begin to, I mean, begin to adopt them things because uh, that I'm spending the time with him. And that's the one that I'm spending my time with. Uh, but I'd like to say this morning, uh, hey, man, we need to spend a lot of time with Jesus. Hey, man, I said we need to spend a lot of time with Jesus. Uh, hey, man, when you think about it now, if you get around somebody this morning in the church it's got a lot of perfume on and you get around them and you hug on them you'll go home and you'll smell just like them amen, amen. hallelujah amen if we'll get around Jesus and love up on him it won't be long and we'll begin to smell like him amen we'll begin to hey, that fragrance and that sweet smell of the Savior will begin to get on us and we get around somebody that maybe not know the Lord
you come in here, amen, don't do nothing, just sit around, look like you're miserable, whatever else you may want to do. Amen, I'm a, I'm a, I ain't going to say you've been with Jesus. I'm not going to. Amen, and I'm not going to, and you ain't going to do the same for me. Amen, you're going to be wondering what's wrong with me. But whenever you begin to praise the Lord, and the Bible said it was quoted last night down at the campfire. Amen, he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. I'm glad that he inhabits the praise. And so when I come in here and praise the Lord, you ain't got to say, what is he doing? You automatically know what I'm doing. Amen, so let me just say this. Maybe we ought to stop just for a minute and just say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Amen, you know why? Amen, there's our brothers and our sisters. Oh, you said, preacher, I've got a busy life. I've got things to do and I've got things going on. Amen, but oh, let me tell you, slow down just for a minute and let the Lord realize. And there's others that talk, they be going through a storm and he needs to see somebody. Oh, praise the Lord. And need to see somebody uh, giving God the glory. Let's uh, slow down a minute uh, and just give God the glory uh, and give Him the praise uh, uh, so we can see uh, who each other's been with. Uh, if you've been with the Lord uh, and I've been with the Lord, uh, uh, whenever we come in together, uh, uh, the Bible said, uh, uh, where two or three are gathered, uh, I'll be in the midst. Uh, it don't matter. You ain't got to have a church for. Uh, you just got to have some people. Uh, close to the Lord and God will bless and he'll see what's needed in every heart. Amen. These, these men may realize that they, these boys have been with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I wonder how they realize that. There's a few things that come to my mind. As I was coming to church this morning, their talk. Yeah. Their talk that they carried on Gave it away that they had been with the Lord. Amen. Our conversation. I thought, I thought, Lord, help me. Whenever, whenever I get in this world and I go out into these walls, help me that my talk will betray me. That they'll know who I am. But by my talk, I don't want I'm not talking about I'm going out, Brother Daniel, and telling everybody I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor, chair, brother Baptist. I'm not talking about that. Just my everyday talk. I will betray who I am. But that I'm being with the Lord. How are you going to do that, preacher? Hey, man, when you get God on the inside, it'll change the way you talk. It'll change the tone of voice you talk in. Oh, yeah, it will. Hey, man, you say, preacher, I'm just the way I am. It'll change the way that it comes out. And you know what? It'll happen. It'll come out with a love. It'll come out with an expression of the day never been around before. Except the people of God. Your call betrays who you are. Amen. Another thing I'm moving on, I'm going to quickly be done. Amen. Your walk will betray who you are. Where you go, amen. The places you go will betray who you are. Amen. Just naturally speaking, there's some places naturally that I will not go. And my wife knows that, and some of y'all know that. Amen. There's just some places that I will not go, Brother Cole. Amen. You know why? It's not nothing to do, and I'm not going to send you to hell for going to them places, but there's just some places that I cannot go. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to tell you today, amen, when you're walking, if I go down here and Amen. If I go in up there tomorrow and you see me walk into the bar, amen, what is that going to tell you? Are you going to realize that I've been with Jesus? Are you going to say, what is he doing? That ain't where a man of God to be. Let's see, your, your walk betrays who you are. And they look at you and they look at your life. I want everybody to know that I've been with Jesus. I want the world to know that I've walked with the Lord. I want my family the Lord, not that I can get a pat on the back, and that the Lord can be pleased to me, and to know that I'm doing what I need to do. Amen. Amen. There's some places, there's some places that a child of God just ought not walk. Amen. 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 That's a message in itself. Yeah. Amen. There's just some places that a child of God ought not to walk. That's 
Amen. Amen. Now I want you to say this, and I'm meaning it with all love. Amen. There's some places, amen, that us adults ought not go, but there's some places that our children ought not go either. Amen. amen. Now we think about our children. I never did understand that. I never did understand. I had a hard time with it, Brother Todd, growing up, amen, to all these other kids. And the evil we went to church with got to do the things and go places. And it seemed like we never did get to go. Amen. I never did really understand that. But now that I'm, I'm a daughter, amen, I've got children of my own. I, I can understand why they didn't let me go to them places. It was not, amen, to, to, to chastise me. It was not to hurt me. But it was to let people know whose side I was on. And that when I went into the world and I saw my friends, no, I can't go there. No, I can't go to that place. No, I can't say that. And then when I said that, and then in the train who my family was, oh yeah. And then whenever you begin to talk about who you are, and you begin to explain who you are, it betrays who you are. It betrays your family, a cherub of where you walk, and it betrays who you are. But when you walk down in the world, and you tell your member church, the Baptist church, when they walk in them doors, they're looking for just what you are. And then they're expecting us to be just like you. Ain't that right? Yeah. Amen. When I go out there and I tell them I'm the pastor of Chirpbrook Baptist Church, they come in here, they're going to look just like I am. What they seen and what they met in me is what they're going to expect the church to be. Amen. It goes for all of us. It's not just the pastor. It goes for all of us. We betray who we are. Amen. It's not so much that, amen, that we're just out there to say I'm this and I'm that. But the way that we conduct ourselves, the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the way that we act, the way that we look, it betrays who we are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's an old saying. I, 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 think, I, I think I heard it as a kid. You are what you say you are. Are you what you say you are? Amen. See, it's easy for me to tell you a lot of different things. But see, these boys didn't have to go around and tell and hold up a flag of who they was. They just went about their everyday life. Amen. And that's what called their attention. They took knowledge they had been with Jesus. God help us here at Cherub Brook. Amen. Hey, that we can live a life. That we ain't got to hang out no signs in the yard. That we ain't got to do all these other things. And to draw a crowd in. That God let them see in our life. And that we've been with the Lord. And that we've been with the Lord. Hey, let me tell you what to draw people up. Hey, Amen. When you've been with the Lord, hot yeah. dog suppers and hamburger suppers, it ain't gonna draw nobody up. But when you get walking with the Lord, hey, people's hungry for that. They yeah. want the Lord. They want His presence. Help us, God, to walk where You need us to. Yeah. The way we act in church betrays who we are. <laughs> Now, tomorrow, if tonight we come in here cold, you just look like you're out there in the left field somewhere. Then Wednesday night, you come in here, you're on fire. Then Sunday morning, you come in here, and it looks like you're out yonder at the lake fishing. Then tonight, you come in, ready to go. It's betraying who you are. And I'm just going to be honest with you and put it there. I can't have no confidence in that. And I can't have no trust in that. But see, God's looking for people he can trust. He needs people he can trust. And he's relying on you. He's counting on you. I thought, I thought yesterday, it come to mind, I still may preach it. Hey, but a thought come to my mind back here with that back there, boys are throwing cornhole. And Justin and Cole was on the team. And I thought Justin, he wasn't throwing so hard. And he was getting kind of aggravated. But he, had a, he said something that really caught my attention. He said, that's okay. He said, I'm counting on Cole. Hey, but he said, I'm counting on Cole. Hey, but there's somebody counting on you. He said, I don't understand. I don't think they are. Nobody looks at me. And nobody thinks no. about me. Brother Todd, there's somebody counting on you. Brother Jerry, there's somebody counting on you. Brother Adam, there's somebody counting on you. You better watch how you live. You better watch how you walk. 
what you are. Now, if you come in here tonight and you're really on fire, they're going to come back. Them people that's really watching your life, they're going to come back Wednesday night expecting you to be the same one. That's right. That's right. That's good. And then they're going to come back. Y'all, y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? Amen. We can't be. Because it's hard to put your trust in something that you never know where it's going to be. When I come to you today for help, I want to know that I can come to you tomorrow for the same thing. Amen. 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 They took knowledge that they'd be with the Lord. Now, boy, he's a whole lot better man today than when I first met him. But even when I first met him, he treated me the same as he does right now. Amen. But he's got something different today that I can tell who he walks with. I can tell who he talks with. You, you want me to tell you why? Amen. I'm not doing this to embarrass you, boy. Amen. I went in up there to his house the other day. Amen. We went up there to look at something, to do something, get a look at some lumber or something. Amen. He, he, he met me on the porch. He said, come in here, man. I got to let you hear something. Amen. On that computer. Amen. With the song, look what Jesus did for me. Amen. That's what he's worried about. Hey, you going to tell you, you tell who the people to walk in with. You tell who they're talking with. When you first get a glance at them, you got to stand all night with them. You ain't got to spend a week with them. Go down there to try stuff on Green Mountain. I guarantee you, Royce, it's going to tell you something about the Lord. Yeah, amen. I guarantee you. Yeah. It's not a might. I guarantee you, he's either going to invite you to church or tell you something about his Lord. Yeah. Take your knowledge of who they've been with. Yes, amen. We never see here. It, it, it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. The day in the society we live in, we wonder, God, where are you? God, where are you? Yeah. God ain't went nowhere. No. But I, I thought about it this way. Justin was counting on coal. And if you're happy this morning, God. Because he has seen it. Yeah. The Bible said he has seen it into heaven. Then he's going to come back to get us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right now he's going up there and he has left me and you yeah. to do the work. That's right. They watched Jesus and everybody, everywhere he went, Sister Tracy, they took the sick to him. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Heal them. They're sick. They need help. Yeah. Now who's here? Me and you. That's right. They're looking at my door. If we was to have the world to stand before us this morning, would there be enough evidence in our life to convict us of being a Christian? Amen. Would there be enough evidence? But they can say them people right there. Terry Brooke and a drunkard walk in the back door this morning. Open the door and know that the Lord has been here. 